Hi, and welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. And I'm Lisa Jackson. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we are very excited to have our first segment with our guest, Dave Daltorio, <laughs> who is going to talk to us about what's happening at the new town hall. It's renovated. It was a big disaster for a long time, and I now it's back. I did not realize that it had leaked all three floors. Third floor was where the pipe... Yeah. Correct, yeah it started first, uh, third floor, and within Worked 30 seconds, down. it was in the basement. So. Oh. That quick? It was that big of a break. Wow. Yeah. Lots of, well, lots of water. So lots it all starts here. You might as well have it... Uh, the water start in a big top. way. Yeah. Or a big way. <laughs> so tell us about the town hall. What's different, and... What um, should people expect when they go in there? Well, before you do that, oh, we're hoping to have some video, which isn't working right now, um, but we will have that up in a minute, so Dave will be able to zip through some photos for you to see. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, big picture of the uh, you know, town hall, um, the extent of the damage. Hopefully we will be able to show I know. the pictures. It should be um, here in a minute. Uh, the renovations included all, all everything from sheetrock, new wiring, um, New Perfect. flooring, mm -hmm. new lights, new ceilings, um, some structural work yeah, that's um, that was identified. Uh, a new fire suppression system. Oh, good, um, good. <laughs> um, and new new burglar alarm system, mm -hmm. new um, fire alarm system. So anything really you can think of. Um, so everything. You might as well do it from from yeah. the structure, from like your floor joists and your wall studs, in. Uh, is all all new. Um, yeah. So from what I saw in the pictures that um, that we that were shared, uh, it went down to studs. So it, yes. so it was basically studs, and you had to remove everything that might get moldy or mildewy. Yeah. A anything that got wet. Yeah. Um, was the the water from the old fire suppression system had um, an antifreeze type system oh, in it right. uh, called glycol, um, because yeah. part of the the system we had sprinkler pipes up in the attic, so we had to keep it. Mm -hmm. the, the water uh, with glycol in it has the antifreeze. Yep. And um, so it was the fire suppression system pipe that burst? Well, there was a, there was a, a failure of a, of a gasket, like a, oh, okay. like a $10 gasket. $10 oh, gasket. So, <laughs> Why don't we have a $100 uh, <laughs> gasket? It's Hopkinton. What's up with that? It, it, it's one, it was one of those, uh, yeah. you know, so you never you never. How old is guess. the building? So I, I forget that. I know it's on the 1923? front. 1923? Like, 1908? No, 19, I think the building was, 18, you know. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Early I, 19, looked, I think 1902 or 1897, somewhere in that. In that. I should so know, it's but, really old, yeah, the building. Uh, but yeah. the gasket wouldn't be that old. I'm sure it's been no, added. No, the that gasket stuff has been added. In 85 or 87, um, I think they had the major renovation of the town hall where okay. they changed the interior. Um, they added more of a third floor. I hear from some of the you know, town fathers, you know, it used to be more of a third floor, it used to be more of a balcony. It you'd, was. Look, you'd look down to the yeah. second floor. Uh, yeah. And there was two sets of stair stairways in the building, like that, one on the yeah. left, one on the right. Yep. Um, Whereas now it's more, you have your center stairway. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they did a lot of renovations in 85. They added the ramp in the back. And yeah, the, and that's all and really important, right, to, to, for access. Um, I, can, I can think of some meetings, I'm sure you've had them, <laughs> up in that balcony area, yeah, across yeah. from all those, the records, you know, yeah, yeah. up there. Before they were and moved, so when, yeah. when they yeah. scheduled us for a meeting there, Youth Commission, because I was chair of the Youth Commission for a while, um, and there would be a Board of Selectmen meeting. Going on down. All I could think is, you know, because I laugh, and when I laugh, sometimes it's loud. So I'm thinking, I, I can't, how can we have a meeting here? Right. Because I don't want to disturb the Board of Selectmen meeting, right. you know. So um, so I'm thinking now that your space is a little bit more compartmentalized and, and maybe, what did they do with the third floor we, balcony? We, we, we did separate it more, um, so now that we, we can't have meetings that don't interfere with one That's another. That's what I thought. We yeah. added a door. Um, there's, there, there's a little balcony up uh, above the selectmen's room. Yeah. Sometimes when it gets really full, we, people are up there. That's um, good, I like that. We have yeah. a door now between there and, and there were some openings up up above in the in the ceiling joists where we sealed them up as well. So now it's kind of a completely separate area. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the selectmen's room right now is the only area of the building not air conditioned. That's what oh. I read. <laughs> so, That's what I read. But Wait, we, it, we have yeah. we have uh, uh, plans to install uh, air conditioning <laughs> in in that area. And was it air conditioned originally? <clears throat> no, it, it it more had. Um, 
see. You know, we fed off of the third floor. Close, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> We fed off the third floor, we'd leave those openings open. The door oh, I see open. what you're saying. So yeah. now that things are and closed off. And the doors off. in the second right, floor right, right. open, so we'd get some. Well, I some. think the board of Slope needs some cooling down, so it's <laughs> a good idea. So, um, so the place where the balcony that overlooks the board of selectmen space, do they put chairs up there for sitting? Uh, no, it's, it was more standing. Mm -hmm. okay. It's more of a more of a hallway with a you know, your, your, your waist high kind of railing. You yeah. might be able to fit 15 yeah. people up there. All right, so just to so help people visualize until we get our, our video up, um, we walk in the door. It used to be elevator. Oh, we oh, have it. Guys are on time. So we walk in the door. It's elevator. <coughs> it used to be elevator straight ahead. Town clerk, um, the bill paying section. Yep. Treasurer and do we then have town clerk on? at the end of the, in the hall. Yeah, Is I that... can go through. Um, sure, I okay. do have some pictures of, of, of the new yeah, entrance. All right. Um, Mm -hmm. Where I was going to start, trying to just do a summary of the, yeah. the presentation. Is this showing okay. on the? Yeah. Yep. Okay. They're doing it right now. Um, yep. What Are I we good, of, Mike? Yeah, we're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> the, um, this is kind of the third floor area, the land use conservation area. Yep. Um, the the water came from you know the area on the right in the back where you see a little window. That's kind of where the circular window is where the right the water where the table was. was over the <clears throat> that, that that water leaked all the way into this area, and on the left is the landing on the top of the third floor. That right. that all got wet. So yeah. um, demolition of that area, as you can see on the right, it, it went all the way down to the studs and all the way totally down to the out. floor. Mm -hmm. um, and because that all leaked down, it wasn't contained to the third floor. It was not. It, it went yeah. down. And uh, the presentation here, I kind of went through third floor, second floor, sure, that's first fine. floor. Um, so the third floor, as we kind of restored it and, and finished it, you know, on the left, you know, we put the new walls in. It mm -hmm. was repainted, all new flooring, uh, and they kind of. I don't want to show the whole thing because the, no, the town good. is planning a, you oh, know, I think an open yeah. house um, within oh, a, within a month or two. Could I come see the new town hall? Yeah, great. Oh, awesome. um, we're talking about planning that around, you know, a few other events you know there's a there's September a D, there's a D, dpw opening coming oh, good. up yeah, that's so, right, so, that's um, too. but on, on the right side you can see it's new flooring mm -hmm. uh new paint uh new lights um, looks beautiful and there's the table yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is now a meeting space <laughs> yeah. um which is separated for the Ms. Selectman's yes, room yes i see um, thank you <laughs> that was good uh the second floor same thing on the yes. left it came through the ceiling um, the door on the left and, uh, is the town manager's door, right. and the restroom is where the, the water came straight through. Yeah. Uh, and on the right, you can see how much uh, demolition we had yeah. to do. It was the entire wow. walls, the entire floor, down to the original floorboards. Floor yeah, that's um, what I was seeing. Some of the original floorboards uh, in the hallway there going towards what was you know, an original kind of one-inch tongue and groove. It was a wow. really nice-looking uh, oh, board, but... You had know, to cover over up. the over no the years. treasure though, right? No, no, treasure no, under the floor no unfortunately, no newspapers, Darn. none of that. Okay. Um, and okay. again, this is kind of the restoration. On the left is the board of selectmen's room. Mm -hmm. um, and Maria it, Glenn sits in that. Little right, and, and there's a little change up, up in the and second floor. And the window floor. there, it's more open. Yeah. Right. Um, and on the right, you can see the finished looking from the town manager's office towards the elevator. <clears throat> Excuse me. We added some windows to room 211. Mm -hmm. and oh, good. Room 211 is actually now going to be the Board of Selectmen's room. Okay. And the Board of Selectmen's room became an accounting area. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. And town manager's office is now where IT was. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, okay. and uh, assistant town manager and, and director of land use. I'm sorry, not director of land use. And the, um, the, the room, um, I know the youth, uh, youth services office used to be there, correct. and they're now over on Fruit Street. Right. And, and, and the IT is over on Fruit Street. Correct. So they took the youth services space with the IT space there. And, and that is now town manager and, and yep. assistant town yep. manager yep. and Lazarus right. space. And, and, you know, there's a couple of hires. There's a procurement manager being mm -hmm. hired, and there's mm -hmm. also a, uh, a senior accountant, mm -hmm. I think, is has been uh, approved for hiring so that they'll be where town sure. manager and assistant right manager so you're centralizing for. the administrative correct perfect um again first floor the same thing happened mm -hmm. uh, and again as a matter of 10 10 15 minutes yeah um Yikes. Complete, wow. complete destruction of everything and this um, was when no one was in the building correct well it was um it was a tuesday night yeah. Uh, which is a late night. So, but that's only till eight o'clock. Right, and it, it did happen around five o'clock. So oh, it there did. were oh. there were people in the building. Oh. Um, well, that, was that a good thing because they could grab files? 
Yeah, you know, it was a good thing, I think, from the standpoint of um, stopping it sooner than later. Uh, right, because it could have, I mean, it, if it went all yeah. night. It right, been. if it went a lot longer than, than, it, than it did, you know, it might have been the entire. files out, because I know, yeah. it, I know files, someone said it went over some of the Yeah, files. a lot of the files, you know, they, they, got, they got wet. Um, the insurance company, they, there was a company that did, uh, it dried them out and restored oh, them. And oh, good, good, good. It, it was a really expensive process. Because it had um, the got glycol in it, right? So correct. They right, had so. to treat for that as well. Uh, wow. And the picture on the right is a picture from the clerk's office. So, oh, wow. You know, it's hard to tell what, bones, what's yeah. what. <laughs> um, and the ceiling, again, ceiling was interesting. When, you, when all the ceiling tiles came down, you could see there was multiple ceilings up there. There was right. another, some original plaster. There was some plywood. There were some all different kinds <laughs> of things that were done to the building. So um, it's actually, uh, and, and not that we wish this on Town Hall, but it may be a good thing to get down to the bare bones, see what you had there, yeah. you know, and take pictures of it just for posterity, if nothing else, so you know what's in there, you know what you're working with. Yeah, I mean, it was an opportunity to do a, what you, you don't get to do, you do a, a structural inspection and a, yeah. you know, w which identified a few areas where during the renovations, they, they did some, some strange things, and to, to bring it up to bring it up to current code, where we had That's to do good. some structural work uh, mm -hmm. on the building as well. So, did the um, insurance cover a majority of that? Or y yep, the, the insurance covered, um, you know, ninety percent. Oh, great! Of, of the work, wherever the, there was direct damage from the water, the insurance company covered everything. Yeah. Um, the only thing they didn't cover was some of the structural deficiencies because those were pre-existing, pre yeah. uh, and, and the sprinkler system, which you know, the, the the water damage didn't cause, you know, it not to be up the code. Right. Um, right. But, um, and that's reasonable. Of yeah, they were. Um, so can we ask what insurance company it was? It sounds like it did. It's it was uh, wonderful. It's Maya. Um, it's M I I A. I think it's no, Massachusetts. I, yeah. Oh my good, but it's but it's Cabot Insurance. Risk is the company. Yeah, that we I, work I think with. we only have three. I work with municipalities. We have three insurance companies that work across well, I'm the glad state. That, so I'm yeah. really glad that they. Um, yeah, it was a, a great cooperation. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. There was a lot of work. So because on some of the areas, like in the first floor here, where we did, you know, more or less. Are you terms. talking about the ground floor basement ish? This is the first floor. Which yeah. I think of as the basement. No. Um, basement. Uh, is the basement basement where is it you the ground floor? Uh, is the basement? Yeah. yeah. This is first floor. I consider it. It was where your clerk is yeah. and your. Oh, okay. First. Floor. Yeah, where the entry uh, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So it, some of that work in, in on the left picture, it all the way in the back didn't get damaged from the water. Right. But the town, it was just an opportunity to kind of sure. make this the space a little more open space, separate the public Brilliant. from the. Yeah. From the employees. Well, and certainly make it more cost effective if, as if we did it just as a renovation. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, sure. Where the insurance. Paper. And the other thing is, even though the water hadn't hit that directly, mold spores can move through the air. And if, they're, if it's damp enough for long enough, the whole building could have been affected by the Correct. dampness. Correct. So and, I think that's. And, a, right. and the insurance company was, was, was good with, you know, yeah. if part of the ceiling was damaged, you can't just replace. Right. Part right. of the ceiling, you replace the whole thing, and that yeah, yeah. that went for painting, and that went for the flooring, and everything That's else. That's great. That's um, great. And, and so the big change on the first floor is, is the picture on the right. Mm -hmm. It's really the hallway now. Is it, it'll at the very end of the hallway here is the side entrance to town hall. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, so the side entrance oh, yeah. in right. the main oh, entrance. So you got rid of that hallway that went back. Where, um, where you went back. You to start to walk. Commission and walk through the area. Yeah, yeah. Um, HR is now kind of the entrance to HR. Will, be the side door in there in the back two yeah, offices of that's town that's good that makes um, sense you can get out to lunch easily and it, it, again it's you know new paint new lights you can't really tell in the pictures but it it's oh, very, it looks so much better so much brighter in the building yeah. um so i have a question um you've been at 80 or town hall has been at 80 south street 18 oh 80 oh, sorry. 80 south yeah, street the did they take any of the um the configurations that they were using there to inform how they constructed this? Because I know you, it well, was very comfortable over there and it was a whole yeah. different kind of space. Um, I didn't know if they valued some of that and tried to put it in here. I know at 80 it was already, it was a vacant, old, an old vacant EMC building. Yeah. And it, had, it was set up already with right. cubicles and, and everything. Yeah. Um, it, it was nice to be able to, you know, have all the departments 
in one area, on mm -hmm. one floor, you yeah. know, on one floor, and all the right. departments working together. Right. Um, so you in could one just area. walk from one cubicle to another. But right. did they? Did they? Were they able to do any of that here in the new space in that we, big we, empty? Yeah. What we did in a new space is we we, we laid out um, all of the working spaces except on the second floor. Excuse yeah. Me. <coughs> mm -hmm. Water. Um, I know. <coughs> are laid out with um. You know, with the cubicles. Perfect. Similar to 80 South Street. So Good. if you go right, up to, you know, the third floor, um, they had some cubicles up there, but we, we've added, you know, more to make it more efficient, for, you know, use the space a little more efficiently on the, the first floor as well. That's good. Um, that makes it easier for people to communicate, like you said. Exactly. You know, when you have the shorter cubicles, you yeah. can talk over yeah. over the cu cubicle and that face-to-face -face conversation. It's a lot easier sometimes. And, and, and this okay. is a picture of, you know, the, the Main Street entrance. So the elevator. It's blue? We, yeah, there's a... We, uh, we, I love blue, We, we so. work with the, uh, the design <laughs> uh, review board, uh, Mary Ellen, um, uh, started... I forget, I always get her name wrong, so I apologize. Okay. Um, she picked all the colors um, with, with a, a small committee of, of staff worked with her to pick the colors for the mm -hmm. walls, colors for the flooring. Uh, it's all new, all new tile in the uh, main entrance. Mm -hmm. um, really brighten it up. Yeah. Eventually, I, I think the town would like to put in more of a, another storefront, like a vestibule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you open up the main doors, there will be another set of doors you can sure. walk into. Um, that will help from a, a cost efficient. You know, sure. from a heating, he cooling heating, right. standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but at this time, it was just trying to fit too much into, you know, time. working with the insurance company and, and adding in extra work to town. How'd you do you know. on the timing of all this? Did were you did you guys stay on schedule or did yeah, it? Because you know, I know I just did a project and it wasn't. You yeah. know, it's hard to keep anticipate how long things are going to take. Yeah, 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 I think I think most people thought we would be finished sooner. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big project. What was project. the date of the uh, It was April event. 11th. April 11th? <laughs> Last year. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was just, it was about 18 months, if you really... So, yeah, so not this, uh, not 2018 April 11th, but 2017 right, April yeah. 11th. Okay. So it was more than a year, about 15 months, but, you know... That's a lot of work, though. With, it was with huge. With all the, the um, you know, as we uncovered stuff like this... Yes. Um, mm. All of the wiring in the building, which looked like that, had to come out. Wow. So we didn't know that until all the, so the ceilings all came down, down right. Yeah. So that was that was a large <laughs> delay on even the insurance companies because their their electrical contractors it took them a couple weeks just to come up with an estimate right. for how much that was going to wow. work. And that was an opportunity for the town. It's a lot of wires. Um, we upgraded our, all our IT um, mm -hmm. from a Cat Five to a Cat six or seven or awesome. whatever the most recent no one is so the bandwidth's I, I quicker know. and everybody Correct. can it makes it more efficient right and it did go all the way on the right is the basement is the new is the old fire um system and then you know on the right we had our new that's our sprinkler room it probably nobody really cares it's except very exciting facilities people um yeah a lot of work in that room and then on the third floor um on the left as you can see the pipes the new the new sprinkler system which goes up into the attic Yep. to provide coverage in the attic, Excellent. which we didn't have before. So that and was is there one storage the in the attic? The, uh, there's no storage, uh, okay. but now we have sprinkler coverage, which we didn't have. And it's with a system, it's called a dry system. So there's no water in it, so we don't have to have glycol in this new oh. new system. It's oh, just no water. Kidding. So does it, does does it, it spray pump that from the... Stuff? Well, it's more yeah. or less you have uh, water ready to go. Right, it's oh. it's at the entry yeah. of the building, right? Right, and if, uh, if the... So the basement, first floor, second floor, third floor, all have a, 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 a wet system, which is this water right at the sprinkler head. Yeah. The the attic has water waiting to be to, to, sent to, to be pumped into there. Once oh, once the sprinkler okay. head goes, it'll that makes that sense. triggers it. Because then there wouldn't be any leak. Right. Because there's right. no water there until right. they call for it. And less maintenance probably on it overall. So <laughs> overall, that's that's just kind of in general the the you know it's hard to explain you know what really happened um it to that level yeah where we no, had to pull all the sheetrock i think that's really good uh, we have all new led lights um in the areas more efficient then too uh, more uh, we, we removed some of the grid ceiling systems uh that yeah, were on the second the floor tile things. Um, and we put in a more usable um, hung ceiling system uh, mm -hmm. which will av avoid having to do some of what's on the left there <laughs> yeah, uh, right? that mess. looks a little crazy because yeah. it was probably multiple years of adding new right. technology wiring. new Which wiring new you know what i hate to say this 
but we're probably lucky there was never a fire there. Yeah. Given there was all that crazy wiring and old things and. Some people were hoping it was a fire instead of a flood, but. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. No, you would have lost more in a fire. Well, you we wouldn't, wouldn't have the historical building. Yeah, yeah. The building would have been. Oh, the yeah. building is beautiful. But it was a very. Uh, wow. Complicated project, but yeah, it um, seems that way. Does it feel know. like a big weight's lifted off of you now? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, just as of today, um, oh, all the wow. files today? were were removed from 22 South Street and back. Wow. Yeah. You know, so we had storage at So celebration, yeah. Correct, so. so so then I guess the, so your role was to oversee the project, or what's your role? Y yeah, I mean, as town Facility engineer, grounds, town engineer, uh, facilities director, I, mean, okay. I coordinated with the insurance companies. And my staff, mm -hmm. um, Matt Reed and, and, and Steve Peacott, um, mentioned them because we wouldn't be able to do it without yeah. the staff yeah. being on site. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, we, we had to have our own contractors do some of the, the town renovation sure. work. So we yeah. had to make sure two of sets of contractors working in the same building um, right. We're all on the same page. Yeah. I don't know if you ever had your kitchen done or something. Yeah, it's, too many oh, cooks. Yes. It's hard to get, too hard to get one contractor nowadays because they're so busy. Well, and um, thank you for doing that because you still had to do your day-to-day -day work <laughs> along well, with this ex yeah. extra stuff. So, I mean, this, you know, this we, we, added... We kept a, up with most of our projects, but yeah, some is. things did slip and, no, and we're catching up No, but I'm sure you worked we had many, extra, yeah, many yeah. extra hours to make sure that project was completed. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of thrown in there and... We're grateful that you guys Thank stuck you. it out. Did you, did you lose sleep? Was it that kind of? Were there nights when you just felt like, oh my gosh, I this have to is get overwhelming. this done? Or um, this electrician some is parts. fighting oh, yeah, with that electrician? Not, but we try not to. Try not to dwell. We on try it. not to dwell on. Yeah. Um, we, we can get done what we can done. Uh, you rely on attitude, contractors yeah. and subcontractors, and you, you realize they have a lot of work themselves. So of course, some parts were stressful, but um, mm -hmm. very That's beginning. Stressful. You know, some of the guys did lose sleep because we had to have we had to have um, mm -hmm. a night watch there for a couple nights. Oh, oh because so it was they it wasn't yeah. locked up. Or we didn't have sprinkler system. We didn't have fire protection, so oh. um, they had us. You know, we were watching the building 24 hours. And I night. hope that was time um, and a half or double time. It, for the guys, yeah, it was or something. Uh, <laughs> you're, not on, you're on salary. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh. It was. Yeah, you know, usually, you know, we, we coordinate it with meetings at night. So, so when is your vacation next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah all the I papers hope so. are done. No, we we caught up on vacation at the end of the end of the fiscal year. So. Good. Okay. Good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're grateful for all the work you did. And yeah, and it's good. We can, I'm really excited I'm to excited go I'm excited to see now. it, too. This yeah. gives me a good idea because I knew what the building looked like, but it's really cool to be able to see it um, in, in person. So I really appreciate your sure. taking the time to put that we still have a little minor, minor things to do. We're working on signage. Um, yeah. It can get confusing. You walk in so there. The general, so the general theme looks like that beautiful cobalt blue wall and like a brownish floor. I was um, like the all carpets, the were kind of brownish. Um, you know, I'm, getting, I'm colorblind. Tan so brown. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing was red. No. Uh, so it's it's hard for me to talk colors, oh, sorry. but sorry, sorry. no, no, it's it's fine. It's it's mostly brown and blue to me. Yeah, um, that's what that's what I so, saw. Brown and blue. But, so. you know, yeah, colorblind uh, works. <laughs> I don't pick colors when it comes to painting. Yeah, uh, okay. Smart. Stuff, so. smart. That's smart. smart. I'm lucky that way. Yeah. That's, <laughs> You get out That's of why I sure the same same one color through my whole house. I don't and like that. Yeah. That's a good idea too. Yeah, there's a couple. There's a multiple. There's not that that dark blue is is one of the colors and it's kind of the the welcoming color. Uh, right, and then there's a. I think there's there's a uh, some white, but then there's another lighter blue color yeah. uh, in some of the areas. Yes. Um, so it, it is a mix. So not green, orange, and white. Hopkinson no, we still colors. have the orange. Uh, <laughs> a little, a little intense. We still have the orange vault, but that's planned to be uh, that's planned to be. Well, painted. you need to see where that is. So. That's planned to be painted. Yeah. So. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you so much thank for your you. time. Sure. Thank you for all you did. Yeah. And getting and your, your staff pictures up and. Thank you. We can't wait to see town hall when they let us yeah. in, you know when they welcome everybody in yeah so. and then there is like so did i mentioned an open house coming up you did. soon right all right mm -hmm. yeah some you said sort of mid maybe, maybe with some mid other mid-september or, like or october well i know family day is going to be september 15th okay. hopkinton family day so maybe yeah, yeah i know we're trying to coordinate there. it around yeah. this poly arts, arts is coming up i think oh, that's right. a few other things is that, Any something yeah i don't even know it's like the third saturday third saturday no yeah, yeah. so all right, well, we really Thank appreciate you. your time. And, yeah, um, awesome. Thank kudos you. to, Can't wait to see it. Job well done. Thanks yeah. for cleaning up all that crazy wiring and other stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Closing yeah. the door so that we could have a meeting and not bother the Board of Selectmen. Right. So, that's Thank you. Great. Yeah.
Awesome. Thank you. So we'll Thank be you. back. Our next uh, thing we're going to talk about is 3D printed guns. Yep. What do we think about that? Is that a good plan? Is it infringing on First Second Amendment rights if we don't have that? Um, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you. This week on the Concerts of the Commons series, the Roy Scott Big Band. of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Sorry. <laughs> and we're back. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with us. We just had a great conversation with Dave Del Torrio about New Town Hall. It's so exciting. I can't wait to get yeah, in there. Yeah, you'll have to check it out. Yep. And we're going to talk about uh, the 3D printer gun question. Um, there is uh, some debate yes. about whether that should happen. The guy himself, Cody Wilson, who is the one right, that's the <clears throat> yep, 3D printer pioneer, yep. um, they allowed him to repost his gun designs on the internet. So he's posting gun designs. He's right, saying as of August 1st, his yeah. right to free speech, mm -hmm. his First Amendment right to free speech, yeah. and then we have the Second Amendment gun right question. But the problem is, and... and I mean, aren't we supposed to be kind of tracking crime and and <laughs> if these are untraceable, they're the ghost gun? I mean, I don't know if that's, I mean, so say, let's play devil's advocate. Say I download the gun, I get this expensive $2,000 3D printer. What color would you choose? Blue. Thank you. So, <laughs> so That's important. Yes, yes. So I download the gun. It's in my house. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Check out my 3D printed gun. Somebody gets it, and is it still trackable because I'm the one that downloaded the image? No. And and how do you know that it I... It wouldn't have serial numbers. Right. But I mean, like, how is that... Yeah. I mean, with our current gun laws in place, I mean, I think that's a little irresponsible. Right. And I thought it was really interesting how quickly it got through... Um, mm -hmm. It was supposed to be extended for 10 years after December th 2013 mm -hmm. when they had to have it detectable to metal mm -hmm. detecting machines. Yep. But all of a sudden this went through very quickly mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. Supreme Court and I thought that was kind of odd. And I know there's a lot of people that are pro-gun, which I, I believe in it. You know, I, I just believe that there should be laws that protect us and, and that we know who owns this, this thing that could kill other people or injure other people. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I struggled with this a lot when I read it. And right. I, and the more I research I did on it, yeah. I just find it really, why do we need an undetectable gun? Right. I mean, why we are, all of our cars have, every panel on it has a serial VIN number. number. Our clothing, I mean, like... We have social yeah, security numbers. We have social security numbers. I mean, like that, why do we need a gun that is not traceable? It seems like it's well, perfectly no. made for a criminal. Exactly. I mean, right. The only, not to be, you right. know... What it would be used for would right. be to be not trackable yeah. and not detectable. So the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988... Yeah outlaws the manufacture or possession of firearms that can pass through a walk-through metal detector yep. or x-ray machine commonly employed at airports without being detected. So there is a law in place right. called, you know, so is, is it, so I guess here um, there's a federal law that's addressing 
the common area of contention around the 3D printed guns, which is whether they're detectable or undetectable. Right. If they are undetectable, then this would be something that's breaking a law. Right. Um, and possessing the law isn't illegal unless you're a prohibited person. If you don't have a gun license, right. you can't have the gun. Right. I mean, you can't even take a nail file on the gun. I know, they took, my, they took my little nail scissors away. So, like, I'm so not gonna stab now anybody. I found the piece that I was talking about. So, gun right activists have reached a settlement with the government that will allow them to post 3D printable gun plans starting August 1st, which already passed. The settlement, which was dated June 29th, says that Wilson and Defense distri Distributed can publish plans, files, and 3D drawings from any of any form and exempt from the export restrictions. The government also agreed to play, pay almost $40,000 of Wilson's legal fees and to refund some registration fees. So Because they had him, because they derailed his, yeah. his situation. Well, okay. <laughs> so, so to me, that was a little odd as well. I mean, they're enforcing the law. I mean, this is, this is a gun. It's, you're printing a gun. You're not printing a button. Or well, no, but he didn't. All he did was he put the he put the, the plans online to be used. Right. So he's saying I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just making these plans. usable. It's free speech. Right. And then they settled to allow him to repost the gun designs. Right. So the question is, the problem is whether the person who's downloading that and assembling the gun right. is using it for personal use or whether they're doing it and they're trying to smuggle guns into some well, area. Well, why do you need a non-traceable gun? I mean, that's the only thing that I... For use, in my humble I mean, opinion. like, that's... I mean, so... I mean, so I get in trouble if I drive around without my license plate on my car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't do that. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I haven't know, I done know. that, but I just know. if you think about that, that yeah. is... You know, I can't do that, so well, why is it okay I to have a gun? I think it goes beyond just the number. It goes to trying to take that gun through a metal detector. Right. You know, so a person, a, school, a criminal, uh, who a, is going to try to get into a court to yeah. shoot up wherever they're going to shoot up right. would not be detected. Right. And so I that's... I mean, the argument may be it only holds one bullet, Okay. So it's all one. of the plans only hold one. Not gun? all of the bullets, all the plans, just this one gun. But there also the li there's um, Wilson has built a website where people are able to download the Liberator, which is that gun, that single shot gun, um, digital files files for an AR-15. That's what I heard. Yep. No, it isn't receiver, just a one bullet. And a complete Beretta no, nine millimeter can... handgun and other firearms. So what I thought was interesting as I read this, I'm like, okay, so this is plastic. They said it's made out of the same material as Legos. So the 3D printer and there's different types of, um, of um, plastic that you use in the 3D printers and there's different qualities of 3D printers. So how does this become, so is it is it a good gun? Is it gonna work? So they tested it. Of course it. it is. So, but it was interesting. Some, some different types of printers printed out a gun that it would just backfire. So you print out a gun on a cheap 3D printer, all the plastic blows up in your face and the bullet. Okay, so you may be endangering the person. So don't we not give out toys that choke children and, <laughs> and hazardous hazardous things okay so yikes point number one so you have to one have to say it's a 3d printer and that was kind of their argument saying that okay it has to be good quality yeah it has to be good quality this takes it out of the market for for you know the average citizen to buy it but then what do we do about the mafia or organized crime or you know other drug dealers or, or whatever they have more money so what did they ISIS, do? ISIS. Yeah. Ter yeah. Terrorists. Yeah, no, it's a terrible thing. You know, like. It's, I, I, I understand. The freedom. I, I totally understand yeah. someone wanting to be able to print their own equipment of any kind. Yep. You know, I think it's amazing that they can put a 3D right. printer and the well, plastic. They, build houses they can and take it to the moon yeah. and build a shelter. And I just saw this really cool thing yep. where someone 3D printed a prosthetic leg yep. that had fins and would function as wow. a swimming leg. And Which is just, awesome. It, That's so a there great are some use. amazing uses for 3D printers. I think the problem, but why the not basic when problem you sell is. sell the, the plan, the 3D print, each print has a serial number. 
So well, that's part of the plan. Some. So when you we print off the yeah. gun, you get the plans, and you put the the algorithm in the computer to print it. Well, or, or they why not have, have a number assigned to it? What's the big deal with that? Like yeah. I don't understand why that wouldn't be something you could. Or do. they would have because that's apply. part of the design. I think before I think before they printed. I mean, we, we could think of all kinds of positive ways to make this work. If they applied for the license to make the 3D printed gun, right. then, they're, then they're at least documented as having possession of that 3D printed right. gun. However, that isn't just anything to say what they're going to do with that, right. which bag they're going to smuggle it into, which country, through right. which metal detector, into which school. So, the, so my concern is, you know, if it's for personal use, awesome. Right. Go build, you know, whatever you need to build. Right. Um, and I think it's really exciting. I just think there are people who will use this the wrong way, so right. they need to build something that's going to detect this so, or make the plastic have some kind of material in it that's magnetic that would register. Right. And I wonder, too, and this is something I couldn't find. I mean, you think of when a crime happens, they look at the ballistics. Yeah. So they see, because each mm -hmm. gun has a specific the, ballistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't have this. The barrel of the gun. Is yeah. Perfect. I mean, do you burn? I mean, like, these guns would be very easy to get rid of. You melt it. You know what I mean? Like, it, it would be very, I mean, there's a lot of ways... And I mean, would would it where it's a little softer than than metal? Would it even have the ballistics? Would you even have no, a traceable? It doesn't have any of that. Yeah. So, so like, that, there are a whole bunch of problems with this in a criminal right in a criminal arena. So, but I don't see why it's it 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 confounds me that it, it can't be like you could send a blueprint and each blueprint has a number on it and that's the blueprint you bought and you're responsible for that blueprint. But, and I think that's fine, but I think <laughs> yeah. that's that's only handling part of the problem. Right. Because then you have, who cares what the number is if it's concealed in a, in a bag and they right. go into an airplane right. and then they take the pilot hostage and, you know, so it, right. I mean, that's only one little tiny piece. How is it okay? It, I mean, it like, how, okay. how is it so okay? This, so, yes. so it is legal. Knight, uh, this guy that they're quoting in um, an article that I uh, looked at with a guy named Knight, who is head of alcohol, tobacco, and firearms at right. ATF. Yes. Um, he says, you know, it is legal for them to build their own firearms. It's legal to carry arms given that you're not, you know, a, a criminal. Um, so all those pieces are fine. It's the concealing piece. It's Mike piece. It's Michael Knight, public information officer and special agent for alcohol, tobacco. So and that's fire. an interesting concept because my brother has built guns. So I mean, if you're a machinist, you could certainly make a barrel of a gun without. And they have metal printer. Right. They, you could build. Well, some, I mean, even a machinist. I mean, guns is. for years and years. It's, I mean, they didn't yeah. have three D printers. They didn't have machine shops. They made mm -hmm. them by hand. So mm -hmm. there is, you know, a chance. But I mean, metal is detectable. Well, that's yeah, the point. You, you know what I mean? That's so that's where it line. gets a little right. tricky. You and, know. Uh, so here again, Knight says it's legal for Americans to build their own firearms without a license. As long as they're not prohibited from possessing the firearm, you know that but they're, how do you they're enforce for personal that? Yeah. exactly personal use, whether it's printed, created by other ways, or legally purchased, has no impact on whether it's legal for an American to build a gun for personal use. Right. So I don't think the problem is with the three D printed guns. Right. I think it's with the detection. The detection. I agree with because you. Because if you're using a gun, right, in a legal way, yeah, then fine. fine. Yeah. You know, and 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 there do, should I be mean, a way to Do they license. register it? I mean, do they? I mean, yeah. I didn't find anything on being able to license yeah. these guns or or even. So this was saying, um, there's an online resource um, for for the ATF um, about 3D printed gun parts um, and how they're monitored. Yeah. So there are they are attempting to monitor them, and it says it reiterates the agency's commitment to applying federal firearms laws, yep. even to new technologies. So they are trying to figure this out and monitoring the criminal, criminal attempt to bypass the regulations. So, the, so there are no limits on whether they right. can build them. Um, they just have to figure out how to regulate them or, or reconfigure the technology so that they can see that gun in your baggage the way they would see anything else. Right. You right. know? Um, and that's hard because there's so many things that we already carry that are plastics. Exactly. I mean, think of all well, the containers to... that we put on. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, everything that we put on the airplane is plastic. So, I mean, maybe you look at a shape another. or, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, like, so you think about that, like, how do, I mean, 
then, I mean, then TSA, and they're talking about cutting back TSA, um, then TSA is going to have trouble, like, identifying. identifying. And, and so, I out. mean, and there's no regulation on what, I mean, you may have a certain type of plastic they use for these 3D printers, but that's yep. not going to, that's not going to solve your problem because there's going to be plenty of other things that are printed or made from that material. Exactly. So um, we have an email, thank you very much, that has an, it says, obscure reference in the line of fire. Okay. Clint Eastwood's 1993 movie, The Bad Guy, John <laughs> Malkovich made a plastic gun ah. to try to kill the president. <gasps> hmm. So, you know, there it is. I mean, th th all kinds of things could happen. If you have something that's not detectable, right. you can get through. Security. It doesn't even have to be on an airplane. So right. just thinking about White House, right? You know, or school, like you were saying, right? If there's, and we don't have metal detectors here, no, no, but any place where there is a metal detector, well, we would we've not got court read. Systems. Wouldn't, All the yeah, court going systems, to the, yeah, exactly, going yeah. to the courthouse, uh, you wouldn't be able to register that right. on on any kind of. Well, and what does the Secret Service and what does what do police officers and what do the people there in law enforcement? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like. There's got to be They go into a police station. I mean, like yeah. with the gun. I mean, it, it, like. <laughs> There's got to be a way. They uh, so yeah. it looks like they're trying to figure out how to regulate this. Right. And that they're there. That's part of their policy is to regulate any new technology. But why it's just it? harder? Mm. Right. Harder to do it when it's something that isn't metal, and it's not. It's being. It's being created in a non-factory, non-registered, non-licensed, right. non-serial numbered way. Right. So it isn't trackable. There aren't going to be ballistics. Right. It may blow up while they're using it, while they're making it. So it seems like right. a it seems like a bad idea it to does. me. Um, if you guys are watching and you yeah, want to give us a call or email us, you know we really would like to have a conversation. We'd love to hear your ideas. Um, we could sit here and talk for a long time. But uh, <laughs> we love hearing other points of view. Yep. Um, so let us know what you think. Yep. We're going to take a break. Yeah. And we'll be back. And, and our next topic, yes. um, we're going to talk about something called Earth Overshoot. Yep. And this is the point in the year at which we have used up the use, the uh, one year's worth of the right. Earth's resources. resources. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. Yep. Thank you. This week on HKM Ed. The Hopkins High School Drama Ensemble hosts their Night of One Act Plays. Yes, of course. So, Jen, Jen, where are you? Oh, there you are. Jen, you killed the king, right? Yeah. Then behold, your new king, Archibald the First. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. A guy? I'm Haley. Hi, I'm Nathan. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal and we love H-Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H-Camp. And I volunteer for H-Camp TV. And I watch H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. We love H-Camp TV. Little green turtles in a goldfish bowl. This week on uh, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Singing a songwriter, Alicia Sky. A big salt pretzel and a root beer float. Parakeets singing their sweet cage notes. We're spinning on the stools in the Woolworth store. Daydreaming afternoon. And we're back. <laughs> we are back. I wish I could sing like that lady on that commercial. I was yeah, me too. Um, anyway, <laughs> we're here talking about Earth Overshoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they describe that is um, on August 1st, it marked Earth Overshoot Day, which is the day when the calendars uh, have we've shown we're consuming up more All than of the, the natural producing. resources that we regenerate in a year. Yes. So natural resources mean water, yep. cotton, uh, fibers, yep, things and we, actually, I think the metals. commodities are so the hard commodities are energy, 
So natural resources, fossil energy, nuclear energy, and alternative energy. So those are commodities and those are and resources. And oil and gas. And yep, and metals, precious metals, base metals, um, ferrous metals. And then soft iron. commodity commodities are food and consumer products, wheat, rice, corn, barley, oil seeds, soybeans, palm oil, and semi-luxury, um, coffee, cocoa, tea, tobacco, so sugar, really anything we orange use. juice. Yeah, That's and natural. then... And, but these are the major things that we use. And I thought it was interesting how it was broken down into kind of yeah, a bigger scope of sure. it. So industrial, agro, raw materials, cotton, wool, timber, rubber. And then ang animal agro, raw materials, feeder cattle, live cattle, and lean hogs. You're saying agro? Yeah, oh, agro. Okay. Oh, sorry. That might no, be just, my I'm just accident. Curious what you yep. say. Accident. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I just, I was kind of appalled. I wasn't yeah. aware yeah. of Earth Overshoot Day. Yeah. And, I, and I don't know if I heard it on the radio. I think I did. Yeah. And then I Googled it. Yeah. And I had no idea. Right. So August 1st. Yeah. But guess when United Four States. Yeah. United States was in March. Oh, way then. We yeah. used it up in March. So it was interesting. So this is... It was hard to really kind of find. <laughs> so the data I found, so the most natural reserves in the world are number one in Russia, number two, United States, three, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Iran, China, Brazil, so that's where and we're Australia. So okay. that's where the, the most of the natural reserves are. So that's where they're harvested. Natural resources? Reserves. So actually they reserve mean? coal. So, so we they're have reserves. Storing it? They're storing, storing it. it. Okay. So then most of the natural resources, again, it's kind of interesting because we hoard, but it's also the almost, it's actually almost exactly the same as the natural resources. So we're hoarding it. And then we're also like, pulling it out of the ground We're or producing, and, or producing and, it. And storing so it. it's number one is Russia, United States, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Iran, China, Brazil, and Australia, mm -hmm. which is exactly the same as the reserve. So the same people that produce a lot are saving it. Right. Which, And I don't think the reserves are counted in that. So I think those reserves, you hold it, but they're not considered... Are they considered... I was looking to it's see like if they... like a bank. They, well, to see if they were actual resources that we use or not because this data was very well you can't store grain forever so right. it could only it's probably just right set aside just in case right and also and it's rotated sold out yeah. to other countries um we have a question on email if we already used all the food <laughs> why are we subsidizing farmers right so the farmers are producing, right? And we and they're getting paid for their crops. Yep. And they're probably getting pay, a com, paid to store. Yeah. Some of the materials. Yep. Yeah, it's an interesting question. That is so interesting. So I mean, someone who works in preparedness, I know that we do reserve many things. You know what I mean? It's it's like our cat. You know. In our garages, we have an extra, well, I have extra gas, and I have, you know what I mean, I have extra food in my house, and I have, you know, extra water Those in my are house. your reserves. Those are my reserves. But, I mean, like, that, that again, like, it's consumption, so you're using it, but it, it just, like, I don't know, I had a, it, it was an interesting to me, and then the users of it and the production of, of carbon monoxide emission, then, I, of course, I jumped into, like, pollution, pollution and because, mm. because using all of this stuff in, getting all these commodities produces carbon emissions. Sure. So that's how I kind of so, jumped into that. So I said, number one is China. Number two is the rest of the world. <laughs> um, or number two is the United States. Number three is India, Russia, Japan, producing Germany. Producing carbon? That produce the carbon. So yeah. China's number one. United States is because number two. India. Construction, yeah. Yep. So, so we're producing all this. So I thought that was a very interesting statistic. So we produce a lot of it, but we also use it. But we're using more than we produce. So okay. that was, does that make sense? So I'm, no, I'm a little confused now. Okay. So we use this amount of these types of resources, but we, we, we don't produce as much as we use. So we, right, we use exactly. more than what we are that's really allotted That's why we're, overshoot, on. we're right. overshooting the resource. Right. So I, um, I that's why I kind of went full, full in this, circle on that. In this, the piece, the article I looked up, um, biodiversity loss is yes. showing some of the ways that the overuse is affecting yep. us. So we're losing some animals. Right. We're losing some plants. Yep. We're losing some whole crops in certain areas and some people who aren't farming anymore because they can't make a living at that right. aren't 
producing their grain. And didn't right. we send a whole lot of grain over to Russia? Yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, this, this guy, Michael Ohini, who is the executive director of an environmental campaign group called The Story of Stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, says there's a human cost to this yeah. when we don't, there's a quote, when we don't live in harmony with the Earth's ability to sustain itself, mm -hmm. people get hurt. Yeah. You see ecosystem collapse in places, primarily impacting poor people. Right. People in the global south. That's who uses, ironically, those poor folks are the ones that produce the smallest exactly. carbon footprint and the ones that because actually use the least resources. Right. So that and was part of that's thing because <laughs> of the machinery right. that's used to produce things right. is not being used in those poorer areas. Right. So clearly the, the big... Um, industrial companies or countries right. are the ones producing Sucking the carbon, producing everything, consuming everything, right. you know, um, but there should be a balance. Right. Um, so the effects of climate change are going to be effect felt everywhere. Poorest nations are going to be hit the hardest, mm -hmm. you know, and we've seen mass starvation oh, yeah. in the Sahara Droughts Desert, all those and, areas, yep. because they're, they're wiped out. They don't have enough rain. And There's, we're seeing it in our country. Yep. I mean, we have wildfires. We have all kinds of... Everything. I mean, we have all kinds of natural disasters that are a result of carbon. I'm, I'm sorry, those of you that don't believe in... Yeah. <laughs> and then that cr creates well. us using more resources to repair what's been broken. Right. And to, I mean, it's like a vicious cycle. So where does it totally. stop? How do we stop know. this? And I mean, but, what do... You I mean, we have to take some responsibility somewhere. Exactly. And the more I read about this, it was very frustrating. I mean, we can do things individually. I mean, there are small things, and I think you and I are of that that feeling, and we right. practice it. Use canvas bags when you go grocery. Right. Don't use plastic. Right. And careful with yep. water. I mean, yep. we live careful pretty with water. modestly. We use plastic But bags. still, we don't live as modestly as oh, no. other people in the rest of the world. We heat our houses. Ironically, I thought it was interesting. So... Obviously, modern countries, I think the big piece of what costs is climate control. Oh, yeah. So so you look at Europe and all these other countries that use high energy, United States, and also it's kind of a colder climate. Sure. So we're heating and, and things like that. But it's, it's and really... And using the fossil fuels. Yeah, which, it's climate control. Yeah. So, I mean, it's almost like a vicious circle. It is, or it totally is. You know, and it just... it. But I think we need to really... I mean, the more I thought about this, we need to buy things from companies that are responsible. We need to, I just, you know, I try to buy power from companies that use renewable resources. It costs a little bit of well, money. Well, solar energy would be yeah. wonderful if we could do solar right. for everything. We just have to work on it so it works right. better and isn't so expensive to install right. and maintain. And But, I mean, you think of the cost on the other end. I mean, the cost of this, and then it's not only the cost, just fiscal costs. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like health costs, public health costs, um, environmental costs. Well, I mean, the costs are so great when you look at this. I mean, it feels so gluttonous. I mean, the more I read well, about it, I was like, yeah, oh, my God. You know, it just it's feels. Amazing. But the other thing is the just looking at the weather. Yeah. The climate change is creating these violent storms, the, the violent swings in weather. Yeah. You know, look tornadoes. How, yeah. How many tornadoes have we had this month or this yeah. year? It just It's horrible. Right. Um, so this is also saying that um, in the world's population, the United States uses five planets worth of, worth of material, whereas India yep. uses 0.7 right. of a planet. And to, if you see the annual. population in India, it's so much higher than the United States. I mean, people live, I have been to India twice, and people live, the population is incredibly high. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, but how they do... use their resources wisely. Right. So here is, I don't, here's a graph there. Yeah, that's a very good um, so graph. So this is United States. We need five Earths to sustain us. Yep. Australia is 4.1, South Korea 3.5, Russia 3.3, Germany 3, Switzerland 2.9, UK 2.9, France 2.8, and so on yep. until we get down to India yep. is 0.7. Yep. China is actually 2.2. Right. On how many planets it would take to to supply there. But I think because a lot of people live in rural 
areas. I mean, yes. they, they live in rural areas, yeah. and they just they live like people have lived for and thousands of years. And they eat a years. lot of rice. We just need to Well, they grow rice. their own rice. Right. And I think that's another thing is, like, we buy grow stuff from food. all over the world. Right. I mean, we have stuff shipped in from Mexico. We have stuff shipped in from Europe, True. from Fruit. China, from India. Yeah. You know, like, why not source locally? And sustainable. Like, I mean, in that, again, it, it uses resources because we need all the, uh, apparently need all this stuff. Well, we think we need it. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so email, we have someone sent in something saying, fun fact. Yes. Farmers are the only people that buy retail and sell wholesale. <gasps> How does that make sense? Right. No wonder wow. they need subsidizing. There it is. Right. Yikes. Right. I mean, that's a that That's going to encourage them yeah. to, to, to make more, produce right. more. Right. That's awful. It's crazy. And like, I mean, isn't this what the government should be thinking about? I'm sorry. I mean, isn't this what their job is? They're supposed to protect our yeah, public what's, health. Yeah, what's that agriculture, food, FDA? Yeah, FDA. Food, drug, and out, um, yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, they regulate food, but also environmental health, protection, yep. public health, health yep. and human services. Oh, yeah. All these agencies, right. this is their job, is to ensure that the United States is, is viable. Sustainable. Right. <laughs> so, so here's another good, I mean it's very irresponsible it's totally irresponsible yeah here's a great this is a great quote too from Ohini he says there's a systemic problem here we have a system that chews up resources mm -hmm. creates products using those resources yeah. spits them out and makes them so they're not durable so we have to buy make so them people throw them away yeah like a bottled water yeah. why are we having bottled water I use bottled corporations water for convinced that. us that we need things like bottled water right governments are not doing a good job of protecting natural resources right so the solution he says is transitioning away from the dinosaur economy yeah which relies on rampant which is consumption a very of clever, resources a and fossil term. fuels yes and should push for economies that use sustainable sustainable materials and run on renewables. Right. Like solar. Right. Um, Hydro. You know, anything that's renewable. Right. Water. So Idaho Falls, where uh, the city I knew I grew up next to, their energy is produced by the falls. And oh, this cool. has been going on since I was a kid. Waterfall. And I'm almost, I'll be and 50 years old next year. And they still have enough water? They, they have plenty of water. Yeah and they produce the power. Mm -hmm. the, the power bills are so minuscule, we even sell power out to other communities. Yeah, and you can do that so with it's solar. So it's just the water mm -hmm. rotating through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, but I mean, that's something to think about. I mean, we can do a little bit as citizens, yeah. but the majority of it comes back to the government and how they're regulating things, how we're purchasing things, who we are buying things right. from, and, All of that. and supply and demand. And also, how so, home gardening is a good thing. Yeah. So on that note, Our we thank farms. you for joining us, Community thank Farms. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Have a great week. Thank and you. And be careful with your resources. Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs>